Nutrition is considered to be one of the main and foundational components to help manage any lymphatic disease such as lymphedema or lipedema. My name is Kelly. I am a physical therapist as well as a certified lymphedema therapist. And on my channel, I talk a lot about the physical therapy components of management of lymphatic health, such as compression, exercise, and lymphatic drainage. But we're going to switch it up a little bit in this video, and I'm going to discuss and share the main components of nutrition and what foods may help improve lymphatic health for lymphedema and lymphedema. For more topics related to the lymphatic system and lymphatic health, be sure to subscribe down below, and you can also follow along with us on Instagram. So I'm just gonna start and go ahead and say it that there is no one main kind of diet that has been shown in research to be the best for lymphedema or lipedema. This is a much more complex situation. There are a lot of different kinds of diets out there and every single person is different in what he or she needs. One diet or one food may work better for one person, but may be completely different for another. So the, really the only thing to do is work with your doctor or a dietitian in your local area to find what, what works best for you. However, we do know that there are some necessary components that do relate to management of lymphedema and lymphedema, and we're gonna go through those next. So let's talk about weight reduction. Obesity can have a negative impact on lymphedema and the lymphatic system. We do know that obesity is one of the proven risk factors for developing lymphedema, such as with a cancer surgery with lymph nodes removed. There is a study that shows that those with a BMI of greater than 30 going into a surgery like that for like one for breast cancer, they are 3.6 times more likely to develop lymphedema versus someone who has a BMI of less than 30. Outside of a cancer surgery situation, we also know that obesity can cause lymphedema just because of the weight around the lymphatic nodes can cause a dysfunction of them. When they have a lot of adipose or fatty tissue also around the lymphatic vessels, this can clog those pathways and clog the vessels, which can back up the normal lymphatic flow or lymphatic drainage, which can back up the system, cause more swelling, and sometimes even long-term damage. Studies also show that those who have a BMI of greater than 30 without any genetic predisposition or any surgeries do have a heightened risk of developing lymphedema like we just talked about before, but those who have a BMI of 50 or 60 or greater are at even higher of a risk. But that being said, weight reduction or losing weight has been shown clinically and in research to help reduce the limb volumes or the swelling, as well as improve lymphedema signs and symptoms. One study showed that someone can reduce up to 44% of their size or of their volume in swelling by losing weight. And that study was done for arm swelling, so it is more likely to be even greater from swelling in a leg. And I do see this clinically often. When someone loses even five, 10, 15 pounds, the volume of their limb, of their arm or their leg does reduce dramatically, but also their signs and their symptoms of lymphedema with the swelling and the tissue changes do improve dramatically as well. So what is the main component for weight loss? It is nutrition. Like I mentioned before, there's not one main diet to lose weight. It's really about what works best for someone. However, the main component that has been proven to work is a calorie deficit of some kind. Again, it's best to work with a nutritionist or dietitian in your area because each and every person is going to be different in what he or she needs and what they can be consistent with. Intermittent fasting is a new and popular nutrition strategy for weight loss. Intermittent fasting is gaining a lot of popularity also for chronic inflammatory disease health. So intermittent fasting, which means fasting and not eating for either a 24 hour period once or twice a week, or more preferably it is fasting for 16 hours out of a 24 hour day. It has been shown that it has the same health benefits as well as weight loss benefits as reducing someone's calories. When looking at the studies and comparing the two, the intermittent fasting even had better fat mass loss as well as improved insulin reduction compared to just lowering someone's calories. 
What happens at a cellular level is that the intermittent fasting also helps reduce and metabolizes fat as well as ketone production, which helps improve cellular damage overall. So when someone is doing intermittent fasting for lymphedema or lymphatic diseases, it may help reduce someone's weight, but also may give some benefit to help improve inflammation in the body. The other main component of nutrition with lymphatics that we can speak about in confidence is with an anti-inflammatory diet. Studies are looking more at the relationship between lymphedema and lipedema with the chronic yet progressive inflammation and inflammatory cytokines. Cytokines serve as messenger cells. They are produced by immune cells, which we know the lymphatic system is part of the immune system. Cytokines regulate various inflammatory responses and they work and interact with the immune system to help respond to fighting off diseases and illnesses. So in order to decrease this inflammatory response and this triggering of the immune system, the idea is to help bring in an anti-inflammatory diet to limit stress on the body. The most well-known anti-inflammatory foods out there are things like blueberries or leafy green vegetables or healthy omega-3 fat sources like salmon. Pro-inflammatory foods, which means ones that cause inflammation that we want to avoid, are things like sugar and caffeine and processed baked goods. Now let's talk specifically about lipedema. Lipedema is a condition that causes an accumulation of excess fatty tissue in the lower body. Specifically, it is usually from the hips down to the ankles, but it does not involve the feet. Lipedema can be a genetic condition, but it is not obesity and is mostly caused in women. Lipedema is not also lymphedema. However, if lipedema does progress to a certain state, it can clog and block the lymphatic vessels, which can cause lymphedema and a further backup of swelling. Although the adipose and fatty tissue caused by lipedema cannot simply be lost with exercise and diet alone, it is important to partake in these things daily. So light, gentle movement or exercise each day, as well as a healthy anti-inflammatory diet to help avoid progression or worsening of the condition. There are other resources and books and additional information and speculations on what foods and nutrition are best for the lymphatic system, and I will place some links for those resources down below that someone can check out further. But I think the big takeaway is that there's not a lot of major research to show that this one diet is the best or this one food is the best. It's an accumulation of, we know, you know, anti-inflammatory diets are great, eating healthy overall is great, avoiding processed food is great, and anything we can do to lower BMIs is all going to help lymphedema and the lymphatic system. But right now it's best to work with a nutritionist or a dietitian or a doctor to find what needs you have and to find what kind of diet and what kind of foods work best for your needs. And hopefully in the future, more larger studies come out to really define what is the best nutrition for the lymphatics. So again, be sure to subscribe down below for more videos related to lymphatics and lymphatic health. And I will see you all next week for another video. Thanks everyone.